to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 9. We'll touch on four scriptures and then I'll begin to teach. Paul is teaching here and he's saying for a great door, he's teaching the church in Corinth, and an effectual is opened unto me. So he's talking about open doors. Are we together now? Dimensions, access. A great door, an effectual is opened unto me. He said, but there are many adversaries. A door of opportunity, a door of growth, a door of grace. But he's saying, he's teaching us something here. That the moment you see doors opening, don't celebrate. Prepare to fight. That a great door is open unto me. But that the moment a door begins to be opened, he's teaching you that you should not be carried away by that door that is open the moment you see doors opening know that there are many adversaries and so young men get set when you see doors open take up your shield of faith because there is the wicked one are you are you getting what i'm teaching you now yes that for every door that is opened and effectual that means you can see the presence of the evil one to validate whether it was God that opened that door. And that you are prepared to fight with this shield of faith. Please understand, I teach you a deep mystery that you will need for your spiritual life. A great door and an effectual is open. But many are the adversaries. But the Bible says you can take hold the shield of faith and you will be able to quench the fiery darts. Now, listen. It matters that we understand how we grow in the kingdom. It matters, listen please, that we understand how we transit in the kingdom. It matters that we understand how victory is wrought for the saints. Because for many believers, we are aware of promises, but we have not been mentored into the dynamics of walking into the experience of the life, the power, the grace of the kingdom. And so while we are inspired by an expected end, many times we are ignorant of the things that happen between Egypt and Canaan. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So it is true that we fix our eyes on the end, but we are never really taught to understand the many things, the vicissitudes that we will face on the way. And lack of, listen, lack of that understanding can do many things to our experience, including not allowing us to arrive at the end. Spiritual maturity is not just the ability to be in church. In fact, it's not just the ability to read your Bible, to be equipped. Remember when he talks about fathers, their advantage is knowledge. You are fathers because you have an advantage of knowledge. So when he talks about fathers, he says you have knowledge. There is something that you know. When he talks about young men, he says, young men, you are about to know something. You do not yet know it. But in your fight, what you need now is the strength and the stamina to fight. So that when you become fathers, you will also be able to guide the young. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Fathers, you have this knowledge because you fought. 
and that experience taught you something about God that has become an advantage and a security for you. Young men, you are your advantage is that you are emotion, there is strength. But there are many things you are going to know. And then he says, guard you with strength and stand in faith because a door is open towards you but there are many adversaries and you must understand the spiritual technology by which men fight until they grow to become fathers listen very carefully to what i'm about to teach you it's a very powerful mystery many believers are not trained to understand the things of the spirit and how to navigate the enemy. Please hear me. This life is a combination of victories that appear when we fight a good fight of faith. Now, I believe in the grace message, don't get me wrong. I believe in all of these dimensions of the kingdom. But there is something about destiny that I want us to respect tonight. That destiny is a threat to Satan. The very, the very picture of destiny, your fulfilling your destiny is the assurance that Satan's doom is imminent. And so when Satan sees a man and a people with a destiny, they become the center of his interest. Now many believers don't know this. We have all kinds of wise sayings. Don't trouble me. I don't trouble you. And all of that. And we have sometimes this false indoctrination that the only way you give Satan, the only way Satan comes to you is when you look for his trouble. You are joking. Go and read your Bible well. The, there is something the moment you carry, that thing calls Satan till you leave the earth. Please understand what I'm teaching you. When there is prophecy upon your head, when there is grace upon your life, when there is a word upon your mouth, when there is an interest upon your life, Satan is interested in you. And let me tell you, there is one thing about Satan, he has an undying interest. He wants everything God wants. And if that thing is you, then listen to this message. Koinonia is quiet. <laughs> The proposition that many believers have, that you just know God, love God, worship God, engage principles here and there, you know, just speak the word here and there, and just cut walk into a glorious destiny is a joke. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but it's a joke. If it is destiny in Christ, if it's a life of victory, then please understand what I tell you that there is faith that overcomes. Follow me as I teach. I have discovered that Satan's assignment, listen carefully, Satan's assignment is never to fight your faith. I used to think Satan was after our faith. I found out that's wrong. Satan is not after your faith. Satan is after the information upon which your faith was built. Now, please understand what I'm teaching you. Satan is not interested in your faith. Satan is interested in information, words. Because that is the basis upon which faith is built. Please understand this. <clears throat> There is no basis for faith until it is built on a word or the word as the case may be. Are we together? If I tell Pastor Alpha or Pastor Femi or Kenny or anybody, I say come. I have called them. I have sent a word. They can place their faith upon it now. 
You see that? So, what you really attack is not their obedience. What you attack is the information. If I tell Pastor Alpha, come, Pastor Femi, come, and they hear another voice that says, go. Now, that is an attack on information because in either ways, it is going to necessitate action. Please listen to what I'm teaching you. Many believers get to a point in their Christian experience where they have access to spiritual information that many times begins to corrupt the pace of their work with God. There are many believers who the challenge in their life is information dependent. Satan just comes in to plant another information. Please hear what I teach you. We're going to go to Genesis and you see what happened to Adam and Eve. I, I thought Satan was after faith, action. No, he's after information. Hezekiah heard just one information from a prophet and Hezekiah's whole life went down. If prophet Isaiah never reached Hezekiah, he probably would be able to, maybe he would have died still. But just that information, one information. The apostles of the Lamb were walking with Jesus and they had one information, I'm about to die, I'm going and I'm leaving you. And that changed everything. Jesus, where are you going? A dead body had one information and came back to life. Wine was finished, one information was introduced and the next thing, water was turned to wine. Listen to me, this is a kingdom where we reign and this is a kingdom where Satan operates and this is also a kingdom where God operates by the power of spiritual information. In fact, information generally, whether spiritual, whether intellectual, whether psychological. Our fight therefore in this kingdom is not necessarily a fight against spirits alone. It's not necessarily a fight against antichrist systems alone. The greatest warfare of a believer, listen to me, will be the warfare of words, the warfare of information. One information comes into your life or a series of information and it turns an ordinary student to become a doctor to become an engineer to become whatever it is information one information in a business seminar suddenly turns someone who has no hope of prospering he receives that information and that information turns his life around. Have you been taught that in this kingdom, the maker and the breaker of men is information? There is what we call IT today. It's called information technology. Information is so powerful that technology was built around it. People have become multi-millionaires because they have mastered the art of disseminating information. They have created platforms around the world that connect people and supply information and they have prospered through it. Information is so powerful that when God is about to come and give Daniel an information, he doesn't just speak from heaven, he sends an angel with it to come. That's how much she places value on information. When Mary is about to receive Jesus, Jesus coming to her like that, she would not receive him. An angel had to come. Before the journey of Jesus started, she supplied an information. And Mary said, be it unto me. Hmm. 
Genesis chapter 3. Now the serpent was more subtle than any of the beasts of the field which the Lord has made. Verse 2. And he said, notice now, we call this the fall of man, theologically speaking, or you know, Adam and Eve now falling from that height and being banished out of the Eden of God. And remember, the entire story started with words. Satan comes to the woman, to the serpent, and says, what did God say? Please go back to verse 1. I want to find out. All I am after is what information are you standing upon? Because the information is creating an effect in this garden. And that effect is creating is not giving me allowance. So for me to thwart the purposes of God, I want to find out. So I'm on a research. What did God tell you? And the woman said, well, verse 2. God said we may eat. So God gave us access to the fruit of the trees of the garden. Verse 3. But of the fruit, aha, uh -huh, Satan's attention is coming now. He says, this and that and that you shall not eat, neither shall you touch it. And then he said, what is the consequence? That if you touch it, you shall die. So an information tied to life and an information tied to death. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And then Satan does not say man, leave the garden. Satan does not say man, I command you to die. In fact, Satan does not say, man, stop having faith. He says, man, give me your attention. Next verse. The serpent said, ye shall not die. Do you know what he's doing? He did not touch their faith. He's redirecting where the faith is based upon now. They still need faith to believe this. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And the only thing he came was to withdraw nicely the information upon which their victory in the garden was predicated upon. And he shifted it and supplied another information. And they absorbed that information. Verse 5. It says, for God knows. For God knows. I write to you fathers, any father including God, that the advantage in fatherhood is knowledge. For God knows that the day you eat thereof, your eyes will be opened. And then you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Verse 6. Now, he said, when the woman saw, notice what the information started doing. The information was like a drug. We are not aware that he touched her. He just supplied an information. The first thing the information changed was perception. The eyes. The eyes started coming under the influence of that information. And then number two, an appetite started coming out that was not there. Now, look at how words are powerful. You will now know why God is called the word of God. The compendium of the thoughts of God. This is how Satan sent man out of Eden. Is it not amazing that he never used a sword? My brothers and my sisters, the greatest battles are not fought with knives. The greatest battles are not fought with blood and arrows and guns. The greatest battles is the energizings that information does to people. And the Bible says here that when she saw that it was pleasant and good for food, the Bible says she partook of it. Ate. That information compelled action. He never touched her, but he made something that had entered her spirit and her mind to compel action. And then the Bible says that she gave unto her husband who was there and he did eat. Next verse. And the eyes of them both were open and they knew that they were naked and they sued fig trees. The long and short is he banished them out of the garden. This is the first official record in the Bible of man becoming a victim of Satan. This is the first official record of the warfare between man and Satan and Satan won. 
so it means that we have to go back and study what weapon he used and he used the weapon of words weapons of information are we together now yes there is another way of doing ministry that can produce great results that information comes I can put something in your pocket and suddenly the power of God will multiply you were moving in innocence but an information came I will tell you something about informations I just needed to know that the real warfare of a believer is a battle of information Satan wants your mind because your your destiny is not just God dependent it's also dependent on the information that runs you your faith cannot be based on nothing and whatever something it is that is the pillar of your confidence of your results that's what Satan wants please listen to me the information upon which your faith is built that is his concern Satan is not interested in your faith as it were he's interested because faith is simply conviction on an information and the corresponding action you take to demonstrate that you are convicted that's it so if I tell Tosin I say Tosin go and collect that handkerchief from this gentleman now faith can come because I have released a word is that true yes that word will stop him from doing what he was doing before and compel him now to act so when you see him move you call it faith but faith would never have been there except that an information came now assuming he's on his way going and I now stop him and give him another word I say don't worry go back what did I do I turned his whole life around using information listen to what I teach you there is power in this will you open up the gate open up the door will you open up the gate Will you open up the gate? Open up the door. One more time, you are asking for the gates of life to be opened. Will you open up? want to show you why information is power both in the realm of the spirit and in this realm I want to show you why words are so powerful God protects it with his name and calls himself the word of God God does not call himself um, the hand of God as it were he names himself after information if God names himself after information that information created the heavens and the earth something was said and suddenly made bones that were hiding to come out something was said that made bones that were dead to come back to life something was said that made fishermen to not be interested in fishing again I can stop whatever you are doing now not by fighting you I only need to introduce something to you I can move your life by information. I can stop your life by information. I can help you to be anointed by information. And I can destroy you by information. No wonder the founders of some of the great conglomerates around the world today, their product, the advantage is the vast access they have to information. 
Google, Facebook. They are a threat today to national security. And the simple advantage is because they develop a psychological platform that compels the world to grant them access to information to the point that the U.S. government has to call them. There are several cult groups today and everything that is discussed in those cult groups are privy information. Are we together now? Let me share with you the technology of words. I want to show you, that's not the topic for tonight. I want to show you why words are powerful. I want to show you why information is powerful. So that you will understand that every time a word goes before you, it's not just a time to jump. It's a time to begin to prepare. Because Satan is coming after that information. This charge I give unto you, my son Timothy, that you wore a good warfare. I've sent you with an information. I've done my best. Timothy, hold that information and fight until you win. Let me tell you why words are powerful. Second Kings. I mean, not Second Kings. Ezekiel chapter 2. I sense a strong anointing in this place. Look up, please. And he said unto me, Son of man, stand up on thy feet, and I will speak unto you. Verse 2. And the Spirit entered me. Wow. When he spake unto me, and that Spirit, the words just stop at my ear and the spirit continued the spirit started making my body to start acting in consonance with what was said now listen please that he wanted me to move from where i was to another place and he simply sent a word and when that word got to the gate of my ears it was not it it had finished his work like a tray every other thing that entered me was no longer sound it was spirit and that when it entered me like a drug reacting to a patient have you swallowed a drug before and then you stand and the contraindications begin to work on you you start to feel drowsy and you are wondering remember you didn't ask the drug whether you wanted to be drowsy or not it entered you and started reconfiguring you I know your action by what you have received I look at your destiny and I can I can trace your victory or your problem to the presence of information what did God tell you your victory cannot be automatic so if what did God tell you in your conversation with him because in Genesis when you read Genesis chapter 2 it says now the Lord came the Hebrew word is the talking spirit the spirit that speaks the spirit that lives by speaking the spirit that changes a man's life by speaking now listen so for every word that is spoken there is a spirit the word spirit there does not just mean the holy spirit it means there is an energizing words and information carry energy they create a climate that compel action this is where religion and science both agree that words are powerful they are shapers of perception they are initiators of action words I write to you young men because you are strong and the word of God abides in you your strength is based on something you have heard and your victory is predicated upon a, a spiritual information supply There is a medical condition called brain damage. There is also another medical condition called loss of memory. It happens a lot with old people. It's a state where because of whatever biological challenges, you no longer 
have the retention power you can forget your wife your husband and medical people agree that is a dangerous state for a man to be in there are people watch this who all of a sudden especially the elderly after 60 70 years of living on earth it could even be a pilot it could even be a professor just two months something affects the bank of information and the man can no longer walk his bones were not affected the information was withdrawn and he stands up and can no longer move and you ask him and say what is your name sir and he talks like a toddler the absence of information turn a man to a baby the technology of words words carry presence information carries energy whether they are spiritual information whether they are psychological information whether they are they are um, intellectual information that every time your the gate of your ears and your eye is open to information there is more that happens to you than awareness and enlightenment ladies and gentlemen now i want you to pay attention because i'm showing you a secret that is destroying our generation i show you the reason why men never stay until they win i show you a reason why very few people are victorious in this life do you know why because one of the worst things that happened to us on earth is a system that allowed information to go uncoordinated is one of the worst discoveries it is an advantage but what a, it was a galore for Satan when that happened there are still a few nations today now I'm not I'm not I'm not speaking political but there are a few nations today that still have some level from an earth realm from some level of sanity a bit and the reason why those nations have is the dictators the leaders there worked with the government to stop information dissemination is that true when you study um, stories of men like Adolf Hitler who led the campaign wanting to make Germany to speak about dominance there were chants and cliches that they continue to put it was on radio it was everywhere and all they were doing is indoctrinating the average German to believe he was superior and it worked he built an army not by recruiting men information terrorist groups today continue to recruit people not necessarily by force they propose information that can make a young man who is on his way becoming a doctor to suddenly turn and say I want to become part of a group and will be willing to die for it Whoever told you information is cheap whoever told you sh information is simple where God names himself the Word of God the information of God so every time words come to you here's the technology when a word is spoken or you come in contact with words or information the first thing that happens to you is your imagination is activated imaginations cannot be activated until there are words this is why words are dangerous words are the only instruments that have the power to activate imagery from where we get imaginations Everybody look up. Imagine a yellow orange. Yellow orange. Big yellow orange. Now imagine that someone is cutting that orange with a knife. Are you seeing how whether you like it or not, you are thinking what I'm saying. You are not just hearing it. I'm forcing your mind to move a direction by using the power of information. Now imagine a mother carrying a little baby. Imagine the baby trying to cry. 
are, are you seeing how helpless your mind is provided the only way you can stop that imagination is to stop the information from reaching you but once it is there it has an ability that not even you can control again once it enters it's like a drug it starts to become an artist it paints images about God about life about Satan a little baby never believed that life can be hard till an information came he heard the father or the mother say Kai, this life self this life self and an image began to be created and that image listen it is dangerous because the moment an image is built your emotions are connected to the image the moment your emotions are connected to images creation begins immediately this is how things manifest please I want you to listen you would thank me for what you are learning today when the Bible says guard your heart with all diligence it knows what it's saying that means control the information that enters into your spirit man because out of it that information is not just words that information is not just speakings. That information is a potential for creation that can make or mar you. What Elijah is playing now is not just music. What he's playing now, they are words, they are spiritual information operating at different frequencies and because your tripartite nature was designed to understand this your ears may not know what he's saying but your spirit man knows that is the reason why they can use music to calm people down that is why when music was played a demon left Saul the demon had something that Saul did not hear the ear of Saul was not necessary. Just allow the string enter. When it gets to the realm of the spirit, it will change back to words and the spirit will know what is being said. Listen to me. Nations today have gone to war simply because of information. Whole territories have been annihilated because of information. There are people today in hellfire because of information who has believed our reports to that man the arm of the Lord has been made revealed words carry spirits words carry energy and this is not some science nonsense I am telling you you literally can program your climate in less than a minute by the entrance he said the entrance of your word give it light and understanding that means show a confused man scattered in destiny just introduce the word of God to that person and that's it your life will begin to reflect the information that you have I'm saying this because listen to me our generation is very careless over our minds our generation is very careless over the power of words in ministry in life people don't seem to have regard for words words are powerful words produce effects words can make words can destroy words can heal words can cause pain words are powerful and if you understand this words create imaginations and they connect us to those imaginations when Satan wants a cause to remain in your family he does not say cause remain he uses words the word of a priest the word of an elder words that have come from father to grandfather now you believe those words and when you believe those words they create images you are emotionally connected to those images and you are loyal to what you believe that is the strength of the altar 
the altar sits on your emotional connection to those words the day you stop believing those words you are ready for the power of God to smash that thing that's why when the Holy Ghost comes he now tells you are you not aware that there is another information Esther listen her man came and requested the king to approve an information and an information was stamped already and the death sentence of the people were waiting they were going about every day they did not know that they had finished killing them by information even when her man died they were still in trouble because the real enemy was not her man the real enemy was the information Esther knew that the death of her man had not yet solved that problem information and so Esther went to the king and said do you know what you have to write another information that can give an upper hand to preserve my people it was at that Esther chapter 6 that the story ends with honor and glory information words that's what they call a prefool many of you do it People have collapsed because of April Fool. Others have died and no opportunity to tell them I'm joking again. Now watch this. You go to an ATM to withdraw money. Remember the ATM does not speak English. You are just using your eyes. Withdraw for me 5,000 and the ATM says cash unavailable. Immediately that report depresses you. You stand there. A machine did not flog you. A machine did not speak your language. It only created an energy. Remember, you are smiling. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Bouncing to the ATM. And suddenly because you punch and it said cash unavailable, you start thinking, this is how my life is. It did not ask you to think that way. While you are laughing, take seriously what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Satan waits until the information has been connected to your imagery then he comes he will create a system around it sit upon it and your doom becomes almost imminent this is the victory that overcomes what victory the labor in the spirit to protect the information it is real warfare and it produces real victory are you hearing what I'm saying now? There are, there are many of us here that are parents. Why do we prefer, now please, I, I, this is respectful with all my heart, but why will a parent prefer to carry a child to a mission school than an ordinary public school? It may not necessarily just be the standard. The parent wants to keep the child within a sociological sphere that regulates the quality of the information that is in the mind of the child. And to do that because it's not cheap, you will pay for it. That's the reason why a school where there can be people, there's no gate in and out. Anybody can lean on this class and suggest you can pay next to nothing. But there are people who pay millions per term on a child. And you are wondering, it is not only the knowledge they are paying for, they are paying for the atmosphere. Are we together now? When you go to Transcorp, or you go to any of these modern day hotels, you buy a cup of coffee and you can pay 5,000. Stroll 30 meters, 10 meters from that place, you will get the same coffee, hello, the same hot water, the same everything for less than 500 naira. So what did you really pay for? Because your access to that place can give you an information. You can be seated in a lounge when two millionaire businessmen are discussing and you will hear something that can be an advantage. You can be there when politicians are talking. So you are not only paying for tea, you are paying for the energy that you are receiving there. Why does Satan fight your coming to Koinonia? Did you hear the wonderful testimony of that, my dear brother? Why does Satan fight tooth and nail? He knows that it is not only the speakings of a man. That more than what you are hearing, there is a spirit. Please hear what I'm saying. Somebody testified that he got an alert. What did the alert do to him? 
noticed he had not verified whether the alert would be reversed. As soon as he saw it, he just started becoming glad. Watch this. A student stands in front of the board. He's coming with his friend to check his result. Glory be to God. I'm happy. We'll all be graduates. And he stands in front of the board. And in two minutes, he sees an information. Three carryovers. And that person is there. And for the next one week, he cannot become himself again because an information came. Imagine that while he's standing there, somebody just comes and says, sorry, it's a mistake. It was not your number. Watch. The Immediately he will change back. Now watch this. Look at how you are moving at the frequency of information. Like people who check admission list and don't see their names and they go back depressed and then they see a text congratulations say for what say you got admission say no you are checking your first name check your son name and you quickly check and that's your name immediately you start to dance the information did not tell you to dance it created an energy that supplied action are you getting what i'm saying now that means if words create imaginations that connect us emotionally to it, then we must guard the words and the information that comes to us. Another thing with words is that they compel us to think and act in honor of the persuasions obtained. To think and act in honor of the persuasions. You receive an information that your loved one has gone to be with the Lord. That information does something to you. That's why you cry. That information does something to you. That's why you are gloomy and agitated. That information does something to you. The same way you receive an information, somebody just blessed you with a house. That information does something to you. Now listen to me. Listen to me. When you become a master at creating your own spiritual, emotional, and sociological climate, you have become a master indeed. Do you know why I'm saying that? Because for every open door you read, there are many adversaries. And guess how the adversaries act? They operate through words through words you will be promoted to a company as soon as you get there you'll be happy until you hear that there is tribalism in this company the moment you hear it it begins to affect you a believer has the responsibility please hear me in honor of your destiny in honor of the purposes of God you have a responsibility under God to set a guard not just over your mouth but over your mind to control the information unfortunately our world today is full of all kinds of information people have entered divination not knowing because in a bid to search for truth they stumble across Greek and Hebrew words who went to Latin words who went to ancient words who went to magical chants and before you know it they found themselves in all kinds of things I learned this about my life and I learned this from uncommon mentors and when I learned this it, I made it a personal responsibility that my life I was going to guard with jealousy because the information that you are connected to ignites creation and sooner or later you will begin to see those information notice I am a doctor this is a patient he's feeling a little bit of pain in his side and then he comes to me and I run a test and I tell him sir you have cancer and based on this cancer I'm not saying doctors are wrong it is at stage four and usually statistics we built a statistics around this information that at this stage of cancer you have between six months to one year to live any other encouragement to give that man is a waste of time the information has entered let me tell you what will begin to happen my child is only nine years 
what am I going to do with my nine-year-old child? And then the spirit of fear rides upon that information and comes. I hope you know that there are cases that don't reach nine months. Fear is coming. The next thing, the spirit of suicide comes. What good is living? While all of this is happening, watch this. Those possibilities will now be making all of these foundational things look strong and powerful. As though they veto you and walk. They depend on your partnership, your reception of words. Now watch this. He said, young men, the word of God abides in you. That means when that kind of report comes, there should be, if you are a believer, there should be war within your spirit. If there is no war, it's a sign that you are not holding the shield of faith and you are not an overcomer. Because it is expected that it should enter and meet another information. And listen, when the world went to hell, there was war in hell. Are we together now? Satan mimicking, attempting to be the light bearer the word and then the word himself the logos of God there was war in hell and he triumphed over them and came out as the firstborn of the gotten the war happened in the realm of the spirit but the result was seen in the physical realm the war always happens in the realm of the spirit the death happens in the realm of the spirit the defeat happens in the realm of the spirit and all we see is the physical manifestation Satan and Jesus did not come to the earth and then they came out and said, wow, now we fought. No, 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 no. The battle was won there. The keys were collected. And he came out victorious and said, all hail, all power. Immediately he resurrected. He spoke straight up. There is something you need. Disciples come together. In three days, you had something that changed your mind. Little children come. Feed my lamb. Tarry in Jerusalem. The Holy Ghost is coming. Information. That's what he left them with. When the angels came, they said, why look up, you know, to the sky? This same Jesus you have seen, he will return. That became the basis of salvation, the death, the burial, the resurrection of Christ. Paul created a theology out of that information. That is where we stand today. He calls it the power of God unto salvation. Please listen to what I tell you. Our children watch cartoons. And people get initiated. Why? Because of information. Notice that when these children hear, they start chanting what they are saying. Even if it's part of what they are saying. Whether or not they understand it. And they become emotionally connected to it. And it begins to affect them. I write to you young men. Because you are strong. Fathers, you know this. You are equipped in knowledge. But I write to you young men because you are strong. I write to you young men because the word of God is abiding in you. And because of that abiding word, Satan is going to come. And when he comes, fight. What fight? The fight of allowing the word of God gain superiority. He said, let God be true and let every man be a liar. This is the warfare of the believer. I got a report from home in the name of Jesus. Let the word of God well up within me. I decree and declare there is no death in my family. There is no going down. There is only rising up. The hand of God is upon me. You are fighting the warfare. You are using that faith that the Bible calls is the victory. I give you a guarantee. There is one thing Satan does not have. An indefinite power to survive. It is the keeper of Israel that does not sleep nor slumber. Satan can be weary. But there are many weak believers. We sit down and allow the devil shred our lives into pieces. We sit down and allow the devil to take advantage. Do you know there are people right now who are like, if you can imagine in the realm of the spirit, imagine chains that are a result of several presents that came because of words. You will fail. You will die. Your life will not rise. You are good for nothing. And you sit down and it leads to depression. The 
the birth of anything valuable is painful it will require you knowing how to fight satan i'm saying this because this thing is killing people all over the earth internet people go online and type something go online and just put something bam, and they hear an information that depresses their life forever oh the job you did with that class there is a statistics like this that out of the so 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 million of graduates only three in ten years see let me tell you the truth and I submit to you many information on this earth are useless as far as your life is concerned as far as your victory is concerned you have an assignment to lean and help the spirit of truth to guide you into the truth that are necessary for your life if you expose yourself to just any and every kind of information you will lose the anointing you will lose relevance you will lose power your strength is in your protecting that information. You must guard yourself. Is God speaking to us? This gentleman sings. I can tell him one word. Your song is beautiful. It will take you around the earth. He can carry that information and be working with it until he meets a manager and the manager looks at him and says what tribe are you you are not this tribe mr man i don't want to lie to you i'm sorry another information creates presence listen we are going to pray tonight and many of you do not know that you are in them you are in the midst of different demonic energies that have come from words and because you are connected to these various things they make good things look evil it is this energy that will make good people look like devils even if somebody looks at you and say nice hair you say nice hair for what you are reacting to an energy there are information that has come to you that nothing good will come out of your life so it corrupts your perception when God says I want to lift you like Mephibosheth you say am I a dog God go and lift others tonight we have come to tear these things it's why people don't prosper let me tell you it doesn't matter what kind of business you do the real business is the business of information is the reason why no great businessman will teach anything valuable everywhere they will call you and culture you and make sure you are ready to receive what they are telling you there was something Peter, James, and John saw and knew that the rest did not know. That was why they became the pillars. There are things God has shown me in my life about himself. There are things God has revealed to me. They become the objects of my protection because they are the pillars of my success. And if anything happens to them, then it will shred my life into pieces and I will continue to labor to protect them. Let me tell you this, your atmosphere is waiting for you to stand in faith and tear down that atmosphere. Otherwise, I don't care what kind of deliverance you do, you will get up and fall down. Your life will never change that atmosphere. I can stand in front of this guy and pick the signals of depression. I can stand in, not word of knowledge, I can pick the signals of discouragement. Why? Because I am also a spirit being and this guy has been programmed by an atmosphere. Let me tell you this. Human beings are simply walking atmospheres, carrying their possibilities around. And you have an assignment under God to fight this warfare of preserving your atmosphere, the insistence. It's called the faith that brings victory. You must be careful what you say to yourself. 
you must be careful what you say to others you must be careful what you hear from yourself you must be careful what you hear about others it is not the information it is the effect on your life on your destiny it is the effect um, a few days ago, I, I was watching an interview between some of the billionaires in the world and I was shocked at that they are so cultured. Words are expensive to them. You see the way they speak. And then I was watching CNN. I don't know when was it. I was just watching a, 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 an impeachment probe that, that is going on and so on and so on. And I mean, you, you could see the way those guys were meticulously words. Just one word, not said correctly, can be the... And I said, ah, God, grant me the grace to master words. If my destiny is word dependent, then do something to my life. This is more than the ability to speak English. This is the ability to make sure that your communications are cultured, seasoned with salt. Number two, to ensure that you have an atmosphere that is a shield. That faith, immune by the word of God. When death comes, it finds an information. When discouragement comes, it finds an information. You are enveloped in it. Just like that. The shield. Please hear me. The days that are coming will require this understanding. The days that are coming, you will need to be the prophet of your own destiny. The days that are coming, you will need to set a guard over your mind. Your prosperity depends on it. Your lifting depends on it. Those of us in ministry, listen twice. Let me tell you, the days that are coming, you must master the art of ensuring that your spiritual climate, that your intellectual climate, that your emotional climate is seasoned with the word of God. It's an assignment you must do because a lot depends on it. Let me show you one scripture and then we'll find a place to pray. Second Kings chapter 7. Please pray in the spirit in one minute. Second Kings chapter 7. Second Kings chapter 7. Second Kings chapter 7. Hallelujah. Please look up. Watch this. Then Elisha said, this is the prophet, hear ye the word. He, he wants to change farming now. I want to show you the technology. Until now, Samaria is under siege to the point that women are eating their children. Do you think those women started eating their children like that? Somebody must have said something that made women to see their children as food because children are not food. Tomorrow about this time, information, everybody say words. Shall a measure of flying flour be, be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria? Next verse, verse 2. And then this other Lord said a lot of things. Simply because he did not fight the prophet. He fought the information that came from God. And there was a consequence. He said, behold, thou shalt see it with your eyes, but thou shalt not eat thereof. Next verse. Now, watch how God brings his word to pass. Look up, please. We're about to pray. There were four leprous men at the entering in of the gate. And they said, the spirit of prophecy made them to start saying to one another, are you seeing how this thing works? They were not talking to themselves before, but an anointing came. As soon as that anointing came, information started coming. Why they said to one another, why sit we here till we die? Was that the first time they were sitting there? They had been there, but see, every word is sponsored by spirits. Listen to what I tell you. When they were prophesying, I hope you know these four lepers did not hear it. 
they did not hear the prophecy but the spirit that went with that prophecy started searching for men and they were sitting they didn't even know a spirit had come upon them the next thing the urge to talk and they said why should we sit here and die and as soon as they started contemplating go back go to verse 4 if we say we will enter the city then famine is in this city and we shall die there and if we sit here we will die also please talk to me what has this got to do with four lepers sitting down it is not about leprosy it is creation about to happen but creation cannot happen until spiritual information come even for lepers even if you cannot walk you can hear It says, now, therefore, come. They are talking to one another. Let us fall onto the host of the Syrians. If we save us alive, we shall die. If they kill us, we shall but die. Look at this. These are people sitting at the gate, running away from hunger. And in minutes, courage comes upon them. And they make up their mind, let's just go and give ourselves to our enemy. If we die information now watch this verse 5 and they rose up what time at twilight to go to the camp of the Syrians and when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria behold there was no man there what happened next verse hallelujah Mako Sibra Katushiata for the Lord made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise. He did something to their perception. They got an information. I'm showing you how they ran away. They got an information and then even a great noise and they said the same way the lepers said to one another this guy said to one another no the king of israel had hired against us are you seeing what perception does it gives you ideas that are not there they, there was no business the kings themselves were afraid but here is an information making a weak man look strong The king had hired against us the kings of the Hittites, the Egyptians, and so on and so forth to come upon us. Wherefore, they arose and fled also in the twilight and left their tents, their horses, their asses, even the camp as it was, and fled for their life. Eight. And when these lepers came, to the uttermost part of the camp they went into one tent and did eat and drink and they carried silver gold raiment and went and hid it and came again and entered into another tent and carried all of this verse 9 to tell you it was the spirit of god they now said the same spirit now made them to pass another information it would have stopped at them stealing to run away but the goal would not be achieved the goal was the salvation of samaria not the healing of four lepers so the spirit now came and still made them to say to one another again we do not well same spirit can you imagine that one moment they are stealing and running away unhappy next moment they are convicted and say we do not do well this is the day of good tidings and we hold our peace if we tarry till morning what if some mischief come upon us now therefore come let us go to the king's house and tell him this good report that king we came and found food here four lepers were used to save a nation through the power of words i'm showing you the technology if one of those lepers just one said i'm not going the rest would have been discouraged it was the spirit of god that made all of them to unanimously agree Man of God, let me show you where the next level of your ministry is. It's not just in a man. It is in an information. There is something you can hear. There is something you have heard. 
there is something you are hearing that is shaping your life literally we are products of the information that we have heard there is something koinonia has heard that has been the building block upon which the faith of god rests there is something our families have heard that has authorized darkness to defeat us tonight in prayer is a warfare of words to stand to say lord a generation depends on the quality of not only my spiritual enlightenment but the warfare my children are depending on the quality listen let me tell you this the bible says i think it's mark 4 or so did i write it here mark chapter 4 and verse 24. let me show you god's standard it says take heed what ye hear with what measure ye meet it shall be measured to you that means hearing is also sowing when you hear it's like a farmer putting seeds and he said that if you hear you are drawing more of that that means you keep attracting more things to your life are you seeing why more tragedies continue to come to people because their minds continue to create the climate for it this is where it comes from it shall be measured to you and unto you that hear shall more be given more of what you hear more of what you hear if you hear the word of god you hear things that build you more of it will come you hear about the anointing it will bring the anointing more of it will come you hear about that's why we must be careful now i minister deliverance and all of that but i have a little problem with talking about satan and talking about demons every day and forever it is dangerous because more than the information you are trying to pass you are shaping the minds of the people to the point that they will never ever see victory again when isaiah the year that king uzziah died isaiah told us what he saw he said i saw the lord i saw the lord son of man what seest thou you must choose what you hear you must choose what you see words is a battle of destiny please understand what i'm telling you it's a battle of destiny words are like drugs the only thing is that they don't enter through your mouth once they enter your spirit they can keep you poor they can keep you less anointed but when you embrace the engrafted word it is able to make you this is the place of encounter. This is the place of surrender. This is the place. Where my flesh gives way Do to me what you want This is the place Where my life is changed Do to me what you want The disciples went into hiding Because of something they heard As soon as Jesus resurrected He told Mary Magdalene he said run go and tell them this new information Jesus is alive he's risen the tomb is empty as soon as she went to tell them that information gave them energy listen you are dying today physically because of something that entered your ears something else must enter you tonight as the spirit something else I am able I am well able I am well able spies were sent ten of them came with something called an evil report the bible did not call it an honest report it called it an evil it was their perception they brought and the bible says i don't care if it's not the word of god it's an evil report and joshua and caleb said let's go up at once he said we are well able they were the only two that entered the promised land Listen, 
Listen, you must make it a project to frustrate Satan in your life. You must make it a project to disallow. He is at the mercy of your understanding this truth. I write to you fathers because you have known. I write to you sons because although you do not know, you have strength. You can fight and experience can come out of your battle. That when you now become fathers, you can mentor other sons. I write to you fathers, young men, because the word abides in you. So when words come, it's a battle of words and you fight in the spirit to preserve those words. Listen, he said, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost comes. But what they received made them to speak. On the day of Pentecost, fire came on their head, but the reaction was speaking. They began to speak. From that speaking, 3,000 were saved. From that speaking, the church began to advance. Please hear me. Your destiny is bigger than your today. Man of God, this level of ministry is only the starting point. And let me tell you this. If you can hold on to that victory, the Bible calls the fight to protect God's information the victory that overcomes. The victory that overcomes. The victory that overcomes. The victory that overcomes. Overcomes. Lift your voice and begin to blast in the spirit. The victory that overcomes. The victory that overcomes. In the name of Jesus. The victory that overcomes. Even our faith. The victory that overcomes. Even our faith. The victory that overcomes. Even our faith. The victory that overcomes. Pray, be a speaking spirit tonight. Pray, be a speaking spirit tonight. Be a speaking spirit tonight. Hallelujah. Prayer point number one. Hear me. Hear me. It was through the power of prayer, a physical climate changed from a dry season to a rainy season. Any climate can change when we pray. Elijah prayed dry season to become rainy season. You are going to pray that every atmosphere and every climate that ministers death, that ministers discouragement, that in the name of Jesus, both the information and the atmosphere live my life. Speak to it. Speak to your childhood. Speak to your limitations. I come in the name of the Lord, the captain of the armies of heaven. Rekete 
pray. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 10. Read with me. One to read. There are, as it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world and none of them is without signification. That means no voice at all is just a social voice. No voice at all is just a technology voice. No, every voice is programming your destiny. Whether it is the voice of a mentor, the voice of the word of God, the voice of culture, the voice of your childhood, the voice of your family, you are going to pray. The Bible says bringing down every stronghold and every thought to the obedience of Christ. Lift your voice and tear down words and information. says while men slept the enemy came and sowed seeds and went his way but the Bible says every tree that has not been planted by my father in the realm of your spirit and in the realm of your mind you are going to uproot and tear down by faith lift your voice and declare I uproot Every speaking, I uproot every foundation, I uproot every perception, I uproot every communication that is not consistent with the character, every communication that is not consistent with my goal, with my destiny, with my dominance. I call against it in the name of Jesus. Is someone praying tonight? Rotos, 
Hallelujah. Please look up while still pray. It's a strong anointing here. The Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee. But we need to know how we resist the devil in this kingdom. Matthew chapter 4 verse 10. Please give it to us quickly. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 10. Resist the devil. Matthew, help us media. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 10. This is how Jesus rebuked and resisted the devil. Then said Jesus to him, Get thee then, Satan, for it is written. That is the basis. It is written. Not I think, not I wish, it is written. The victory that overcomes is a victory that is written. Written. The logos. Get thee tense poverty, for it is written. Get the tense limitation, for it is written. Lift your voice and declare, Satan away from my destiny, away from my life. It is written. And speak scripture. It is written. It is written. Hallelujah. Prophet Joel. Prophet Joel taught us a very deep mystery. In chapter 3, please give it to us while praying. Chapter 3 and verse 10, Joel. Joel 3 and verse 10. Beat your plowshares 
into swords. In other words, it's time for the fight of faith. And you're pruning forks into spears. This is not just a time for harvest. It's a time for warfare. And then he says, in that warfare, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You are about to say so now. This is strategy. Everything the Bible says you are, everything the word of God says you are, you are about to say it now. Lift your voice and begin to prophesy. I am strong. In the name of Jesus, I am blessed. If someone pray, I am anointed. My business is flourishing, pray. The ministry is flourishing by the Spirit. My home is flourishing by the power of the Holy Ghost. My finances is flourishing by the Spirit of the Christ. I go from glory to glory. I go from grace to grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. And listen to me. You are going to declare. The Lord spoke to us that this is our year of extraordinary fruitfulness. You are going to pray and prophesy. It must be as he said. It must be as he said. Over every area of my life. Lift your voice now and begin to pray. It must be as said.
Job chapter 5, verse 19. Job chapter 5, verse 19. We we'll read 19 and 20. Job chapter 5. Job chapter 5. Are we there? He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yea, in seven shall no evil touch you. Verse 20. In famine. This is the first kind of trouble that comes upon men in the earth. Famine. He shall redeem thee from death. In war. He shall redeem thee from the power of the sword. 21. Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue. Neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. At destruction and famine thou shalt laugh. Neither shalt thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth. For thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field. Listen, this is a mystery that one day God will grant me the grace to teach in this place. The word league is covenant. That you will be in, in a covenant with the stones of the field. And the beast of the field shall be at peace with you. Listen, he said in six troubles, yes, seven. He shall deliver you. You are about to pray these prayers in famine, in war, the speakings and the tongues of men. Lord, arise by the Spirit and let my life see your salvation. Let my life see your salvation. Lift your voice and pray. Are you praying? You shall be a Praise the Lord. Just two or three more prayer points and we are done for the night. Listen to me. You are going to cry to God and ask the Holy Spirit to be the administrator of your atmosphere. Listen. It's a powerful prayer. He is called the Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts. The protector of your atmosphere that your mind will always remain at the presence Samuel had the voice of God because he was lying down close to the ark you are going to pray Spirit of the Lord 
you were sent to guide me into all truth. Guide me into the truth formation that will build faith in me for the days that come. Lift your voice and begin. Please lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. The wisdom of God. Guide me to all truth. Take away the unnecessary for my life. Lead me to information. Lead me to scripture. Lead me to revelation. Lead me to understanding. That build my life. That build my destiny. My money, it is your prayer. It is your prayer tonight. It is your prayer tonight. Guide me to all truth. Truth for my destiny. Truth for my finances. Truth for my life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, Declare ye that ye might test be justified. That means your bailout, your vindication in the realm of the spirit is predicated upon your declaring. Declaring what? What is written? Listen. The word of God that is allocated for every area of your life to produce victory. You are not going to spare. You will speak. Listen. Listen. I told you that words carry energy. They carry presence. They create imagery. They connect your emotions to those images and then they make for creation. This is the technology of information. You are going to pray over anything in your life that must change in this season. That must change. You are going to enforce the word of God with power and grace. I'd like you to lift your, your voice. Mention the areas that must change. Place a demand. Don't let the devil speak things to your ears. Is it your finances? Is it your family? Is it your spiritual life? Listen to me. You can create a new effect. You can create a new atmosphere. You can create a new image. You can win. The word of God abides in you. Open your mouth and declare, declare, declare. The word of the Lord. In the glory and the power, I see miracles, signs and wonders. In the glory and the power, I see miracles. I'm a sign and wonder.
Listen to me. He said, Son of man, what seest thou? Hold on, hold on. You are going to pray. Lord, change my perception about life, my perception about God, my perception about my circumstances, my perception about Satan. Do a miracle to my sight. Lift your voice and pray. Do a miracle. Change my perception. Every image. Every emotional connection to every image that is birthing pain, that is birthing impossibilities, that is allowing darkness to reign over my life, change my perception. Koinonia pray a miracle of the seen eyes. Shalaba, 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 Shalaba. Change my perception. The Bible says, For we know that all things work together for good to them who love God and who are the called according to His purposes. Lift your voice and pray. Change my perception. Change my financial perception. My spiritual perception. My career perception. My sociological perception. My emotional perception. Let my perceptions be lined up to and with the world. Let my perceptions be lined up to and with the world. Change my perception in the name of Jesus. Change my perception. My perception of ministry. My perception of life. My perception of my family. My perception of increase. My perception of your purpose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's have the last prayer point for tonight. Listen. The victory of the believer is in staying and hearing and seeing the word of God. But we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror we are changed into the same image not another you will become the reality of the information that enters your life you will become weakness when you hear weakness you will become weakness when you hear weakness you will become strength when you hear strength listen to me you will become powerful when you hear power you will become full of faith when you hear faith. You will become a man of speed when you hear words of speed. You will become revived when you hear words of revival. You will become a man of fire when you hear words of fire. Listen, your thinking makes your belief system and it translates into who you are. You have an assignment to from today and forever protect yourself protect yourself protect yourself from the influence the arsenals of culture the arsenals of satan the arsenals of past your past the arsenals of your weakness career whatever it is make up your mind that you sustain the stamina to stay on that which is written for the bible says listen to me that heaven and earth will pass away 
but this word abides forever. The Bible says he upholds all things, not by ideas, by the word of his power. So no matter what you are going through in your life, you are not defeated if what is written is still in your mouth. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. I'm rounding up. This book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night consistently that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein. Then and only then shalt thou make your way prosperous and thou shalt have good success. Last prayer. Lord Jesus, magnify your word and the voice of the Holy Spirit above every other voice and influence in my life. Lift your voice and pray. Magnify. Magnify. If someone pray, magnify your word above my circumstances. Magnify your word above my limitations. Magnify your word above ministry. Magnify your word. If someone pray, Lord, I want to see your word exalted. Be lifted high, be lifted high, oh Lord, be lifted high, for you are holy, righteous and holy. class of degree you finish with. take weak men and set them as kings and princes. It is within the power of God to prosper a man. Please listen to what I tell you. It is within the power of God to keep a man. It is within the power of God to bring deliverance and to bring salvation. It is within the power of God to give you a new name that the mouth of the Lord himself will call Exalted that when you stand through life, anything that is not the word of God 
you have an assignment to fight that fight it's not a weak fight it's a great fight until that which is written becomes your experience until everything that you see is Jesus until everything that you see is his grace his life his power his wisdom until everything you see is that what you saw in your dreams and your vision now becomes your experience you continue to set your case on Jesus until you see that anointed version of you that you saw in your dream no matter what you see in your life don't let men clap you to your grave if it has not become what you saw keep pressing Lord I thank you but I keep seeing we are able to go out and take the country to possess the land from Jordan to the sea though the giants may be on our way to hinder God will surely give us victory we are the generation that is well able regardless of your background you are well able it may not look like it until the word of God gains ascendance your assignment is to believe his report and to stay there apostle but you do not understand I didn't get admission apostle as I am right now I don't even know where the next meal will come from apostle I prayed and fasted for the anointing for things to move in my life it doesn't matter what it is my brothers hear me my sisters hear me you are only victorious when you stand on God's side stand continue to exalt his word lift it above once he stands above you will see what that word will do it will become not only an anchor it will become a cover it will become the basis for your victory hear me even the hand of God wrote twice that means whatever was written can be rewritten did you hear what I said the hand of God wrote once and wrote again for Moses Isaiah go back to Hezekiah tell him I have changed my mind Hezekiah there is no death for you again please pay the price to know God pay the price to know God Hezekiah you will continue to be king I have shifted the son to prove to you that I have rewritten Esther meets the king and say write again O king it was her man that deceived you to write you wrote death it is within your power to write life again and the king said bring me the paper and he wrote and stamped it hear me no matter what has been written over your life I stand by the word of God listen to me in this kingdom please hear me there is a heavy anointing on me I want to pray for you listen it says my heart is indicting a good matter yea I speak of excellent things it says my tongue is the pen of a ready writer I want to write something in your life by the Spirit it is true that what was written can be rewritten please you don't have to kneel you don't have to kneel please stand it is true that the ordinances and the appointments of death the appointments of failure it is true that the expectations of wicked people waiting believing that your family will not amount to anything that your life will go down tonight I stand by the spirit indicting a good matter he said yeah I speak of excellent things and he says my tongue is a pen of a ready writer I stand by the God of heaven who calls men by his grace I declare whatever was written that is an appointment unto death I change it and I speak life to you now hear me 
if Esther did not come to Mordecai, it was not only, if Esther did not come to the king, it was not only her man. Hear me, look at me, let me teach you a mystery. If her man died and Israel died, God lost. The verdict that was in the presence of the king was not just for her man, it was also for Israel. And Esther came and said, King, right again. The verdict that plagues families and plagues individuals, hear me, it is not only for your grandfather alone, it affects everybody. It is not only for Nigerians alone, but we are standing like midwives, like Esther, to say, King, right again. In the name of Jesus, every appointment unto derision, unto death, unto causes, unto woes, I stand as one who stands by the election of grace and I declare that ordinance is changed over your life. Please help them. That ordinance is changed over your life. Hear me. It was unfortunate for Herod. Herod spoke against Peter. And he was speaking against the gospel. But there were saints who were praying. There was nobody to advocate for Herod. Herod fell from his throne, died immediately, and worms came out of his body. They are taken for a prey, and none say it restore. Listen, restoration is advocated for through the power of prophecy. I decree that anything that has become a programming over your life and destiny to sabotage the purposes of God over your life. I stand by the power of words and in the name of Jesus, we create a new outcome for you. When believers are not matured, to be carnally minded, the Bible says, is death. Is that in your Bible? It says to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. How does a person metamorphose from being a natural man to a carnal man, then to a spiritual man? There are various stages. The natural man is one who has not even met Christ. The carnal one is the one who has met Christ. But the workings of the spirit and the workings of the word has not yet found expression. You see the difference now? So the natural person, that one, he just needs Jesus. He needs to go to the cross. There are many, many carnal people in church, unfortunately. Many of them, because of the longevity of their stay, have been appointed leadership positions. And you will find out, you know a carnal man by his perpetual disrespect for the supremacy of the word of God and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. These are the two indices that define true spirituality or otherwise. I know you are carnal or spiritual to the degree to which I see your submission level to the word of God. So you can be in the office for instance and you are a relative Christian. What did I call you? Uh, we were traveling and I was shown a very interesting video that I laughed. They told somebody to choose, I think, a million dollars or the presence of God. And he said, no, he's not worthy for that presence. He is, is the, the money that... When I saw that, I said, that's right. 
gave her a silly excuse i'm not worthy for the presence no are we together the cure for carnality is not counseling no the cure for carnality is not even deliverance like laying on of hands to cast out demons the cure for counseling is that the cure for carnality is an immersion into a system that brings you under the authority the governing authority of the holy spirit and the word of god and let me tell you it takes a long time for that transition to happen anybody who tells you that he got born again i hope you know there is nothing called the gift of maturity all these believers who evolve out of nowhere and claim maturity no sir maturity even physically madam if you give birth to your child today and by the next day he's coming with a cup of water to give you will you drink it what is wrong with bringing a cup of water you are saying that child i gave birth to the child i've not even recovered myself and the child said good morning ma fluent english and he's giving you a cup of water no i mean there are natural things that don't make sense how do god can give you speed don't get me wrong god can give you speed but believe me there is no such thing as instant maturity god himself subscribed the path of maturity to process you know why so that you can build a pattern around it to help others to mature there are many when someone tells you i am a matured christian you don't need to argue what are the indices how do i know you are a matured christian i've been in church for a long time i handled bible study last year not necessarily those are not indices for maturity listen it is my prayer and i pray that god will open your eyes to see the burden in my heart my desire for you is to be so thoroughly sound and furnished not unto pride are you together now so that we you can do much for the kingdom just walk with me there's something i want to show you tonight many believers are not efficient tools as far as the revelation of jesus and the advancement of the kingdom is concerned because they are largely ill prepared if you are a battle axe and you are blunt you have not been trained you will only be a casualty if taken to battle is that true transformation discipleship is a word that many people hate and then there are others who say i want to grow at my pace i will feed myself and learn whatever i need to learn you see as a student respectfully speaking it is irresponsible to choose what you want to listen to is that true when a student gains admission you go and sit down in class trusting the teacher and trusting the system if the teacher fails you then the government that is responsible will punish the teacher but you don't get to the class there are many many courses in in our, our institutions of learning many students will call certain courses boring is that true and there are certain courses you call exciting there are certain courses that are maybe three four five credit units and there are others that are just one credit unit that means the emphasis is not the same depending on what you are going to become there are times you sit down and you almost want to cry when will this course finish but you will sit down there but when we come to church most times we the bible calls it itching ears what is this one that is teaching on on character or this now we've not had the message of favor in a long time is it that this man is not aware of what is happening in nigeria you sit down why don't you trust verify whether the teacher hears god verify whether the teacher loves you if so sit quietly and learn in the school of ministry we have several courses and finance is the last of them and usually you will understand when we start the course finance because there are many people if the first course is finance as soon as we are done you will graduate by yourself and say that's it may god bless you i think god has met my area of need <laughs> let me tell you why many believers don't grow properly we run around from pillar to post 
looking for what we want to hear what not what we need to hear are we together pastor can you teach about wickedness why because you have a personal problem with somebody politically we convert your problem into a message are we together no you don't come as a ministry listen you must be disciplined even as a man of god i'm saying this to ministers of the gospel if a church is looking for money that does not mean you change the curriculum and then this remember the holy spirit is called the lord of hosts he is the one who designs the growth pattern of the people are we together you don't just come and preach your need and say i think something is wrong we are going to emphasize this issue of money and giving for the next eight weeks i'm not being sarcastic it's important for you to understand that the believers need to grow holistically it's been my emphasis that if your growth does not capture everything meant for your holistic development let me tell you this when satan comes to attack you he does not just attack you he studies how the pattern of training that you have been submitted to if satan finds out that in your training prayer was the emphasized he will route through that area if satan finds out that prayer was exaggerated as against the word of god he will route through that if he finds out that the place of character was not taught you he will route through it if he finds out that success influence and other kingdom teachings were not captured in your experience he will leave you to keep practicing priesthood while he destroys you using the tools of need satan does not just attack like that so he comes to find a family that loves god sincerely consecration hunger but they do not know anything about the economic system of the kingdom he will fashion his he will want to attack their prayer life but he will not attack the prayer life by attacking prayer directly he will use the area of ignorance to so distract them to a point that the next time the man of the house says all right everybody let's come for prayer the wife will turn and say i don't know who this your god is but i'm tired of this thing and by the time the wife frowns at her husband he will go back and say god you had her me too i'm tired it's just i didn't say my own are we together imagine a doctor that never went to anatomy class imagine a doctor that never went through surgery teachings and then you find yourself in a hospital and he says i want to help you you will not even pay come and lie down come and do what you just lie down and he carries an injection like a knife wanting to stab you who taught him that strategy the quality of believers that we are producing because of the kinds of things that we are teaching are we together it is important to touch the various areas and the various aspects of the, the the kingdom life but we must never de-emphasize or overemphasize the truths of the kingdom now i i submit to you that it's a very difficult thing difficult because every one of us is already given a dimension to function and the dimension you are given will usually be your emphasis that is where the need for the other dimensions of the body comes in god does not give you the labor to learn everything by yourself you can outsource the dimensions you do not have through humility and meekness that means god is training me in the prophetic so my own assignment will be consecration fasting and prayer i will not have the time to go and learn under you know a business school or learn under a financial mentor 
and God will save me that burden because there is somebody doing the work for me but I must honor the person to say listen while I was fasting and praying and rolling on the ground for one week God was dealing with you too I am not better than you simply because my training looks more spiritual I now submit to what you are doing please help those under the anointing one lecture from this guy who has spent five years learning the principles of the kingdom will now empower me in addition to what i have and then the guy too there is the side effect because for focusing learning about the economic system of the world as against his spiritual life he must balance it too and if he ignores me he will be wealthy but one attack on his life because he does not understand priesthood he can't defend himself one wrong investment motivated by the spirit of poverty can bring that man down are we together i'm coming back to this point let's go to the third level the third level and, I, and I, this is where I want you to pay attention to. The third level is where believers are thoroughly trained and thoroughly mentored, but they are not connected to purpose. Let me tell you, there is a danger for any assembly when you keep pumping anointing in people, revelation, revelation, and the people don't know what to do with it. The body of Christ is in trouble for this one. Is why many, many men of God keep having a headache. When you get young people, a young man, a young lady, you are teaching them about finances, teaching them about prayer and fasting. Do you not know that knowledge has an implication? The goal of all that investment is that there must be an opportunity for them to deploy. By the time a man is fasting 100 days, yet there is nothing for him to do in church. Are we together praying the kind of power that guy has one day he's going to say listen I, I don't know what to do with all this fire locked up in my bones that's why you can give him opening prayer of two minutes and he will turn it into prophecy for one hour it's not that he's bad the fire is too much and you have not told him what to do with it and there is no opportunity to deploy it every time you begin to teach people right and to mentor them there must be in your training the systems of deploying it this is true for ministry but this is also true for government if you keep training young people you are having graduates coming graduates coming and there's no platform to be able to help them let me tell you something somebody is going to come into their life and say listen don't mind this person you can start your own church if god is calling you that's fine but if god is not calling you that that becomes the advice or you can start your own business or you can do whatever it is let me tell you it's a risk to enlighten people and leave them without purpose are we together so i'm praying every day with you i'm fasting every day with you you've now graduated from the school of ministry impartation every service you are falling down and standing up revelation after revelation a day will come knowledge is what will frustrate you not ignorance you will find yourself overdoing things and you'll be angry because the goal is to have expression something within you keeps crying for expression are we together that's the reason why a man who keeps teaching his child say how to drive help them please you are teaching someone how to drive his car you're teaching him how to do something and you leave him there the gentleman can drive and yet there's no car to drive one day what do you think is going to happen talk to me you did it so you know one day when he's not around you say listen uh, this this fire is 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 this this thing i need to drive God never designed people to remain members forever. Listen, listen, just listen, just listen. When I say not to be members, listen, people don't have to be around you to be with you. Are we together now? Hmm. 
that means if God is training you and one day God gives you a job with African Union or UN you have become an extension of what we represent are, are we together the joy is to see that now the value for you ah, I prophesied oh this thing I just said this is a prophetic word in the name of Jesus Christ please sit down this is the aspect that is missing in church and I say this respectfully speaking there is quality training quality mentorship training but there are no platforms so you find out leaders who should be changing society are dying with church fanatism nothing for them you see people who should change there are people who qualify to be governors leaders but they are not aspiring because they have not been taught that purpose is also spiritual moses whereas you should be helping israel joseph you should be bringing solutions to the economic problems of israel whereas you are there quietly with a small life this is what this is why we are not able to translate our christian experience to a context that transforms society it is the reason why when you say you are a christian especially in africa most times they just look at you as if you are just a fanatic with no value to society is someone learning let me tell you this i have said it and i will say it again preaching on the platform is not the only thing to do with the anointing preaching on the platform is not the only thing to do with revelation if we don't mentor the younger generation properly there will be trouble because when these guys are accessing light it's important for them to know that the seven mountains are also platforms of ministry so that the person who now is routing the part of politics and the one who is staying to become a national prophet they are doing the same thing in the realm of the spirit you cannot say the one who is at the altar is higher than the one who is in government no no without esther the jews would die are we together it took joseph manning the helm of affairs to preserve the purposes of god Africa needs to understand the apostolic structure for kingdom advance. I can tell you we have not yet captured that blueprint holistically. That's why I took the time, respectfully speaking, to honor his majesty because of these kinds of apostolic understanding. You imagine now, respectfully speaking, the kind of approach of leadership and governance to his territory. Africa I'm a man of prayer I'm a man of fasting and I'm a man of the word but I'm a man of the whole counsel of God there are many young people right now who are not supposed to be on the pulpit they are being on the pulpit is causing trouble to them and to others they, they are not finding definition but the mentorship structure they have received has said once you are spiritual find a way of coming to stand here and they stand here yet they know joseph the, the, the throne is calling you daniel the place of governance is calling you esther you are fasting but realize that you are being called to the palace there will always be people like anna the prophetess their ministry stops at the temple they never go out of the temple if you take them out of the temple to be involved in secular things you have destroyed them they were called to stay they will stay and wait and jesus will still come to the temple and meet them this has been my concern by the privilege of god's grace i have studied many revivals i have studied a bit of the history of the church in nigeria i can tell you not to this is not the platform to start discussing it but some of the major moves of god in nigeria let me tell you this what killed them 
was a the emphasis of certain things there were those who came emphasizing the prophetic consecration prayer and then they didn't place emphasis on doctrine there are those who came i don't want to mention names respectfully speaking and the emphasis was just on doctrine and teaching and they de-emphasized the prophetic and prayer and both moves suffered by the time nigeria has only preachers i promise you that we are in trouble we did a bad job if a man of god produces only preachers then we're in trouble because one policy from our parliament can stop the purposes of god are we together i believe in influence i believe in the whole counsel of god men of fire but people who are sheep among wolves having the intelligence of the kingdom and even the wisdom of egypt listen i have studied territorial transformation by the grace of god and i can tell you the truth when jesus walked upon the earth we need to study the ministry of jesus i can list for you all the people groups that jesus influenced jesus did not do crusades alone read your bible there were times he was with tax he he the same passion he took to preach in one crusade was the same passion he took to go to the house of an influential tax collector what was the result many people were set free because the man was a corrupt man look at jesus one moment he's talking to thousands of people the next moment he's alone with the woman at the well with the same passion the next moment he's investing time casting out one demon because that one man set free was equal to 10 cities hallelujah please look at me i can tell you this and i say it with every sense of humility it is the turn of africa to blaze the fire of revival we have prophesied this and many who have gone before us have said this for many years that there are certain nations that have been uniquely singled out by the election of grace one of them chiefest among them is nigeria now with all due respect and honor to every nation i am telling you this prophetically and that by the spirit however rather than just rejoicing and jumping and saying we are the ones pioneering revival we need to go and study the revivals that have happened and why they died are we together now yes where i come from there is a wise saying that when you see your neighbor's bed on fire don't just watch and laugh look for water quickly because that same fire is coming to you too look for water and start soaking your own beard too europe has had its chance of revival the u.s has had its chance the word of faith and all these ones but let me tell you as we prepare for the return of christ whether we like it or not this mantle for global missions this mantle has right now is in africa it's not a lie it's not help those under the anointing it's not a lie respectfully speaking once upon a time now i say this with every sense of respect many nigerians fly out with joy and say they are going for a lecture or conference somewhere but right now the whole nation and the entire globe they continue to come to this candlestick that has now been lit but my listen my 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 charge tonight is a prophetic warning because while we rejoice thinking we are getting it there are things we are missing too we are already beginning to follow the same pattern that aborted the revivals past do you know why rather than staying with the holy spirit to understand the structure and the formation of the move of god in a way that it lasts listen do you know when god comes his emphasis is not to produce preachers alone his emphasis is to produce witnesses 
and ambassadors please hear me body of christ god is not in the business of raising preachers alone preachers alone will not get the job done they never got the job done in the bible alone read the bible and see all those who walk wealthy people walked those in government walked joseph's walked esther's walked elijah walked you can't teach elijah about finances that's none of his business he's a radical prophet however you can't come and put esther down and joseph down and throw away economics some of you right now are about to lose your mantle and your call because you are following a template if i'm spiritual i must be this no no there is a formation and there is a distribution of training patterns we must have the intelligence listen men of god we must be matured enough to know what training pattern is allocated for what formation you don't train a theater art student in an anatomy lab it doesn't work that way there are courses called general courses that everybody would do education secular enlightenment gives us that knowledge there are many josephs who have been trained to become elijah they are going to fail there are many esthers who have been trained to become elijah and there are many josephs elijahs who are becoming esthers there are people who have no business with the palace their assignment is at the altar they should be mastering the art of the key is to recognize your place and appreciate other dimensions are we together for as long as this revival produces only preachers i repeat we are in trouble no the revival must produce men of hunger don't get me wrong the revival must produce men of fire that intrinsically god is not looking for preachers god is looking for witnesses if the geography of your witness is the altar then so be it stay there and fan the flames but don't stop joseph from getting to the palace because you don't need to be there your assignment may not need the palace but if joseph never gets to the palace if esther never sits down with ahasuerus there are jews that will die now please look up can i tell you this whether you are joseph or elijah or daniel or anna the prophetess the word of god prayer the spirit of god these are general causes no matter where you are going to whether you are getting to the palace it will still be by the spirit by the word are we together there are many people claiming they are prayer warriors and the grace that follows a prayer warrior is not there because their assignment is that of a daniel and every time they want to go like daniel they are surrounded by elijah's so they feel guilty for being daniels and they are giving up the elijah mantle the daniel mantle to remain elijah if you are not elijah leave that place and find where daniel is pray in the spirit for one minute my heart is boiling with a good matter to give us structured intelligence on how to maximize the revival that is upon africa right now because we are making a costly mistake and by law of the holy spirit is pointing us and helping us to have understanding Shalika Brandes Koti Zakater Yakata Hallelujah. Now watch this. By the time we go to Hebrews 11, 
the bible does not dichotomize them when we get to hebrews 11 both the daniels the elijahs the esthers were given one word elders the bible says they obtain all of them the ones who preached the ones who man government for jesus the ones who preserved the economy they said all of them were called elders I like this part of the song. We'll raise your banner high. We'll shine your light so bright. We'll sing in honor of you. We'll raise your banner high. down I read my Bible well and the Bible says he gave unto some he gave unto some apostles he gave unto some prophets he gave unto some evangelists some pastors you went to school if they say he gave some that means there are others what did he give the rest because the same lord is rich unto all we raise your banner high we shine your light so bright we sing in honor of you i raise your banner high look up if Mary was mentored by Anna the prophetess she would have missed Jesus because Anna the prophetess will keep her in the temple and as wonderful as she is Anna the prophetess will not be able to teach her so much about marriage yet marriage was the area of her call that was the area that will bed Jesus her assignment was to be chased enough until Jesus arrives through her Joseph of Arimathea was not a prayer warrior. But without Joseph of Arimathea, he used his influence as a man of means to secure the grave where Jesus was put in. Without Joseph of Arimathea, the word, oh grave, where is your sting, will not come to place. The body of Jesus was hanging on that cross. Prayer and fasting had finished his ministry. It took influence to bring that body from the cross please hear me nigeria we need to redefine by the spirit the apostolic formation for a revival that lasts we have laughed at others who went before us some of us were arrogant enough to even be sarcastic towards them now the mantle has come upon us we should not fail a generation through pride we need to sit down and learn the patterns of the kingdom Africa does not need preachers alone. I repeat. Terrorists know this. Do you know not everybody who is a terrorist is kidnapping? There are those who are financiers. There are those who are the priests and the mediums. You hardly see them outside. But they are the ones who power those ones who go and fight. They understand the formation. Hear me. There are some of you based on your call and assignment you are not only going to fast and pray for 40 days the rest of your life will be in that consecration because you have the assignment of a watcher you have the assignment of a watcher you will be given the burden of nations 
you will be given the burden of territories you will pray down revival upon people but my caution for you is while you pray down revival don't teach that watchers are the only people needed in that formation no I repeat again Moses Aaron did not need to learn the wisdom of Egypt but Moses needed to learn the wisdom of Egypt please hear me if you are Naomi and you are Ruth pay attention to your marriage that is where the mantle is if you are esther pay attention to your rising and influence because your assignment is in the palace if you are daniel make sure you keep having an excellent spirit get the phd become a professor don't let anyone tell you you cannot rise because you will need to sit on the board of companies and corporations and stand in for jesus now hear me Please look up. Please look up. Sit down. Sit down if you can. Goodness. Do you know why I'm sharing this with you? I have been having a lot of prophetic encounters in recent times. And I've been picking the burden of the spirit. The spirit of God is saying something is wrong. We are veering off we are doing it religiously and even with pride but we are very enough if there is no restructuring of the divine pattern why do you think the bible captured all these people if the bible wanted to teach you only one thing one person was enough there are 66 books full of different scenario coordinated together to produce the same thing in our midst here there are judges and justices when we are praying in tongues they pray too in our midst here there are senators honorable members house members when we are praying in tongues they pray too because that is general cause when we are fasting remember there are courses in the university it doesn't matter whether you are studying mathematics medical science architecture when it's time for that course everybody comes that course is prayer that course is fasting that course is doctrine learning the word of god but as far as the jurisdiction of your witness is concerned i repeat if you are mary go and read about mary if you are elijah do you know what mentorship should produce mentorship should help you to start finding a figure in the bible that looks like your future if at the end of training you in church three years five years you have not found your parallel in scripture then you are not mentored properly if the only person you see through your mentorship platform is elijah you did not see well because elijah is not the only one in the bible the assignment of mentorship is to open you up to the various dimensions of the kingdom personified by the individuals written there so that by the guidance of the spirit you will start finding the blueprint that reflects where you are going to look out to abraham your father and to sarah that body i called you and blessed him so if god has told you you're going to become a kingdom billionaire don't feel less relevant just because you may not have the grace to fast for 100 days you are not less spiritual you are the one who will make the prayer warrior remain by supporting him so fire on with your learning of economic principles There is a lot of ignorance mixed with pride in the body of Christ. We must humble ourselves. We are not the first to carry this baton. But we must carry it and run with it with honor. Looking unto Jesus, not unto ourselves. Our sufficiency is not of ourselves. Please hear me, Koinonia. The day I fail to show you this, I have failed in my assignment. If we assess koinonia right now and the only thing we can say of koinonia is that it is a place of where preachers are trained that may be wonderful if that is my assignment 
provided i acknowledge that there are other dimensions i don't have then that is fine but where i tell you a preacher is all you need to be i deceived you where i tell you a businessman is all you need to be no that's why i don't run away from politicians no i don't i don't run away from business people you will find me in their midst and i'm talking because the pattern that jesus left us was territorial influence training and representing the purposes of god let me tell you this when you study church history you will read where the church started making a mistake and i will tell you where that came from when emperor nero emperor nero was one of the the vicious emperors that persecuted the church historically speaking right at that time if you were born again you would not even last up to 72 hours so other aspects of the kingdom were not the interests of people it was just to stay martyrdom was all that they looked at now when emperor constantine came and the war that was fought with the sign of the cross and he brought victory by reason of the dream and the vision he had he now allowed the worship of god freely the believers who were now saved because all those who mentor them had died they didn't know what to do with their remaining lives now that they were not matired again so he started bringing all kinds of versions of imbalances a few people among them said listen we can't sit here and die like this we have children we have needs and they broke out and when you read the church it was one move every move you call from the protestants the puritans it was a a detection of imbalance in another move let us be careful so that we don't clap for ourselves too early our children will edit our scripts our assignment is not to do everything but our assignment is not to stop what god is doing because of our biases and our prejudices i truly believe with all my heart that god allowed his majesty to come and a judges and people scattered here to be able to teach you something about this message remember what i have said when it is the ministry of prayer if you say you are a businessman you spoke nonsense because a businessman is first a priest before a king are we together when it has to do with the worship of the king all of us bow even nebuchadnezzar was smarter he knew he said when you hear the sound of the trumpet i don't care who you are bow to that image the highest royalty i cast my crown before the highest royalty so there is a meeting point where businessmen apostles prophets teachers are we together professors presidents governments heads of corporations billionaires in all kinds of currency there is a central point of convergence that is before the king when we come before the king you don't come as a professor <clears throat> That's why you take your golden crown. Your crown, your crown defines your jurisdiction of dominion. You take it because it does not matter again. When you are before the king, you cannot be a king. Mm -mm. Are we together? So you are a king in the judiciary. You are a king in business. You are a king even in the practice of priesthood. But when we stand before him, I don't want to know who you are again. There is only one that commands our attention so we cast our crowns before hold on your first assignment is to have a crown your real worship is not your falling down your real worship is that your crown worships first so by the time you stand before him without a crown he says what happened i said you are kings where is the crown for being an influential person in the judiciary there's nothing to cast esther where is your crown the anointing didn't come for you to heal the sick it came to take you to the palace esther you, there is a roll call of worship in heaven i do not see the crown of esther 
so when we stand to worship him elijah stands with his prophetic crown daniel stands with his governmental crown joseph stands with his economic crown are we together ruth naomi all of them and together we cast our crowns before now you understand the song the highest royalty I am undone before your glorious majesty he's the king of kings and lords of lords you are the king of kings listen you understand the song now when you are getting your crown it is because one day you will cast it before him so when you stand before him you will say i am a professor lord i did well i stood to represent your purposes in the educational sector but i am still a priest so as elijah kneels down the professor kneels too the doctor kneels too i have become a consultant surgeon through my expertise i have set up hospitals today and by the privilege of God's grace, I have advanced the purposes of the kingdom. Oh king, here is my report. The king bows to the king of kings. That's what Daniel saw. Daniel did not see weak men. Read the vision of Daniel. Daniel saw kings bowing to the king. I look forward to the time in Africa when presidents will take their crown on behalf of their nations and kneel down and say this is to you the king of the ages not from a standpoint of fanatism let me tell you this your worship is not complete if your crown is not on the ground your worship is not complete if you failed in your assignment to discover the place of your crown no if you are a man of god your assignment is to wait upon god in fasting prayer consecration to build the kind of power now god will grant you access to the minds of people and you guide and mentor them when i worship the lord i cast my crown ministerial crown that is my jurisdiction i cast it with honor if africa has only business people we're in trouble joseph alone cannot do the job daniel alone cannot do the job if there are only elijah's and jeremiah's we're in trouble in fact if jesus does not have a treasurer and finances a man who is only having an assignment for three years yet he had regard for finances please hear me the revival's past failed because the individuals who became the frontliner of that revival, they were unilateral in their thinking and they did not capture the other dimensions. You will read about the revival's past and you will hear that when other people rose with other dimensions, the ones who were currently on fought them because they said, I, it is only the pattern given to me and it's a mistake that is repeating itself again in Africa. You see, the spirit of the apostolic and the prophetic empowers you to read the writings on the wall so that you can guide God's people holistically. When we challenge the body to be united, we are not saying we should be uniform. No, uniformity is not unity. Unity is a sense of appreciation that Esther plus Elijah plus Jeremiah plus Abraham plus Moses, are we together, plus Joseph, plus Mary, plus Joseph of Arimathea, in fact, plus David, it is all of them together that equal Jesus. So if your theology says Elijah equal to Jesus, it is wrong. Elijah equal to a dimension of Jesus, you are right. If your theology says Joseph equal Jesus, you are wrong. Every one of them were manifesting dimensions that were holistically captured in Jesus. 
you're a man of God here we need to trust God for grace to return back and check our mentorship structure but I can tell you the fire of a revival is brewing I have said this for many years I have seen it many times in my visions and it is consistent with God's end time prophetic blueprint for the nation there are many young people who are rising but the only ones who are celebrating right now are preachers that means it will make other people who are not in the preaching dimension to feel that they are not part of it now the same way there are young men and women rising apostolically and prophetically in nigeria you will start seeing a parallel in the business line you write it down you will see young men who will arise people who will be summoned by the economic powers of the land to vet them and say by what technology are you accessing the riches of the earth and they will be as spiritual and you are going to see people who will rise up supposedly from nowhere are we together now and elections in their various places there are various regions, world level, they will win it with a landslide victory to the point that you will say, but it looks like we are rewriting politics because the hand of God is the one behind what we are seeing. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh, oh. wrapping up let me teach you something when I began my training with God by reason of my background and at that time it was a moment where God was beginning to do great things and to build people as it is with God when he starts out with people it was just fasting prayer consecration the word are we together visions of revival but when i had the vision that represented my mandate it confused me for many years because in that vision i saw a generation of people i've shared it with you many times you've heard it that it was a generation of people and they were crying and in that vision i came i was upstairs a building hiding from people who were maybe wanted to injure me or something like that and when I looked at the people, those in front were zoomed to me. And they said, I asked them what is wrong. And I remember them saying, no food and no water. And I said, ah, ah, no food and no water. How does that relate to spirituality? And then I said, who is the cause? And they pointed to me. I said, me, I can't be that wicked to do this to you. And then I said, okay, I'm coming to help you. Where would I get the food and water? I opened that door and it was not a chef I saw. When I opened that door to go out, I said, if I perish, I perish. I saw an old, bearded, gray-headed man. Now I know he's the Holy Spirit. And he held my tiny hands to go and serve food and water. Do you need a chef or you need an old man? hear me there are some of you today by reason of this teaching if you want to be effective go back to school while we are praying be praying too but go back and get your PhD and your professorship because your assignment it may not be for everybody but for you there is a place you have left where destiny has been crying. Who should occupy this position? You are here joining us in prayer. We don't need to have a PhD. We don't need to be professors. We have found solace in priesthood. But we'll be wicked to tell you don't do yours. Esther, don't look for a man of God alone. Look for Haggai, the keeper of the king's virgins. He is the authorized mentor to train you. 
if it's a hazardous that you want to sit near it will take more than mordecai is there as a man of god but in addition to mordecai look for Hegai. he's the one who trains the keepers the women who are with the king no matter how mordecai loves you he cannot give you the training of royalty because mordecai sits at the gate he's an intercessor he's the one who will caution you but he's not the one who will make you queen Ruth, if you want to leave your assignment obtain grace from god and don't run away from naomi when you see her because if you run away from naomi looking for elijah you will never see boaz the things that are written are for time they are for our learning so that we through patience and the comfort of scripture might find hope elijah if you know you are called to be a prophet you better look for elijah even when daniel calls you don't go your destiny is with elijah don't make the mistake of leaving elijah to be trained by daniel daniel cannot make elisha to carry the double portion of elijah's mantle is someone learning dear businessman do not think less of your passion to have financial resources for kingdom advance provided your heart is right and it's not a search for mundane carnal acquisition of things but hear me i give you a precaution and i give you a warning every time the king calls whether you are elijah whether you are Daniel, whether you are Anna the prophetess, the position is to take off your crown from everywhere. Whether you are in government house, in the research institute, you are here standing like me preaching, or you are someone leading a leadership institute, you are a justice, or you are whoever. The moment there is the clarion call of the king together. They teach us in social studies um, government nationalism and all kinds of courses that anywhere you are when you hear the national anthem of your nation what did they teach that you do that you stand where you are because the moment the national anthem comes you are no longer a professor you are no longer a banker you are no longer a doctor you are the citizen of that nation when you see an american person or a british i can't remember which of the nation we traveled to and i was on my way returning i think that was last year and then i noticed everybody was standing at the airport i said what's happening they said they're about to sing the national anthem i said oh wow i'm not a nationality of that nation but i had to stand to respect their honor so when the master says believers fast he didn't tell men of god he told all of us when he says believers seek my face he's not speaking to a man of god are we together one thing that happened to everybody was that it was their relationship with god that caused them to excel ruth if you leave god boaz will look at you like a village girl who needs help and never be able to marry you Elijah, if you leave God, you will be one of those prophets. Maybe a false one. Joseph, if you leave God, you will remain in prison there. Even if you come out of prison, you will go back home, not the throne. The factor that does not change is Jesus Christ and his purposes. This is sound doctrine. This is discipleship that turns members to ambassadors let me tell you the truth ladies and gentlemen god is tired of church members i don't say that to mean membership is wrong you understand the context god is tired of membership who are like sheep, respectfully speaking without direction and anything the man there are many believers who are confused in their spiritual adventure the reason why many people are living the faith life is because there is no excitement and purpose connected to it now when you come for koinonia every week as i am teaching you there is purpose connected to what i'm telling you 
when I teach you on finances, I will teach with the same passion as when I'm teaching on fasting and prayer because in my economy, there is no difference. Provided it is a tool that reveals Jesus, I will teach it with the same passion. There are some of you here, when we are talking of prayer and fasting, you listen. When we are talking of revival, you are happy. But when we are talking of influence, principles of territorial, you know, kingdom advancement, you just shut down and say, Kai, this is not what I want to hear. It's a mistake. It's a mistake. You must embrace the whole counsel of God. There is the area of emphasis. Forever, I'm a man of God. That is my assignment. If you see me talk, among business people is an elective if you see me talk among politicians and the rest my core assignment is here ah and i'll be a true soldier i'll do as it beats me whatever the cost i'll be a true soldier We spend ourselves and wear ourselves because we have come to find out that he is more than life. Tomorrow, first thing in the morning, 6, 6.30, I'm out of this city again, preaching for Baba Wale Oke in Ibadan. By night, I'm on my way to Lagos, returning back, then Cote d'Ivoire. Why am I doing this? It's more than fame. If it's fame, writing a book is cheaper than stretching yourself. Please look at me. I want you to look up to us as we follow Jesus sincerely. But as you look up to us, you better be honest to find out whether if you are Esther, thank God for Mordecai, but please find Haggai. If you are Elisha, even if you find Moses, look for Elijah. Is someone hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. There are business people who are being mentored by prophets. You will be a prayer warrior, not an economic giant. Respect the prayer warrior, but find a sound financial mentor with a kingdom dimension who will teach you the economic system of the cosmos while you honor the prophet. You are truly trained by the one who helps you become. Are we together? There are people here by reason of your assignment. God is subjecting you to high level influence and exposure. I'm not teaching you dishonor. The truth is that sometimes we men of God, by reason of our assignment, God may not have to expose us that much. But your own assignment requires that you understand the ethics of royalty you understand the ethics of culture and how to navigate yourself if you are mentored only by the man of god teaching you on stage you will fail when you stand before kings in addition to what mordecai does it is Haggai who will teach you what the king wants and Haggai said let me teach you something he told us something mordecai never told her he said when it has to do with ahasuerus i have worked with him I know what he wants take this oil let me teach you what the king wants rob this oil for one year when Daniel went to Babylon it was not Bible study they were teaching them there they taught them the way of the Babylonians is it in your Bible the anointing he had from priesthood empowered him to be ten times better but what exalted him was his ability to solve real life problems This is what the Spirit of God has been telling me. I have a responsibility to contribute my own quota with love, no sense of self-righteousness or justification to charge the body of Christ. Pastors, men of God, we need to trust God for grace to unashamedly begin to embrace an authentic apostolic and prophetic structure that will host the revival coming and to preserve it for generations unborn. May God forbid that if Christ tarries and we no longer are here, somebody will be teaching one day and say, see where apostle got it wrong. He taught you to just pray and fast, but he taught you to reject influence. So Esther did not go to the palace 
and Haman's plot found its way. It is amazing that when God wanted to deal with Haman, it was not Haggai he called. He called Esther. There are many dimensions of the victory of Christ that is not men of God who will produce. There is a dimension of wickedness. Look up please. As anointed as we are, men of God, has this solved Boko Haram problem? Please talk to me. Are we not praying? Are we not fasting? Has it solved the problem of terrorists and bandits and the rest? We continue to pray. But it will take more than that. That should be a lesson to us. As far as prayer is concerned, as far as fasting is concerned, as far as communicating sound doctrine is concerned. But when we have a judge who is anointed, are we together? By the time there is a case somewhere and there is a threat against the program of God because that person has had the legal qualification plus the anointing that has come from the man of God. Now you can defend not only the purposes of, of, of Christians but the purposes of, of a civil life, a life of excellence and dignity. A man of God can be anointed to go for a crusade. But one airline that will face financial bankruptcy can stop the person. That's it. A man of God can be anointed to go somewhere. But a poor image of a nation can make the person to be thrown back from that nation, return back to your country. We need to understand the holistic implication of this. You can be anointed without a passport and a visa. You will not travel to go and preach anywhere. And if the person who is responsible for the passport and the visa is under the influence of a demon spirit your ministry will die a natural death are we together no matter how anointed you are as a man of god is it not the givings of god's people that will help you build the house for god if the people are not empowered and then you now ask them to give it's fraud hallelujah We're going to pray worshipers arise businessmen arise apostles arise prophets arise captains of industry arise territorial mentors capacity builders arise Royalties arise. Footballers arise. Athletes arise. Music ministers arise. Doctors arise for God's sake. Tech giants arise. Manufacturers arise. Producers beyond oil arise. That is the name and that is the formation of the army that will return Christ. When it is time to fast, everyone fast like you are a man of God. When it is time to pray, pray like the only thing in your destiny is the prophetic but when it's time to go through that distribution the geography of your weakness take back your crown put it on your head and stand like the champion that you are we will not call you a prayer warrior when we see you on TV we will call you the consultant surgeon the one recognized by United Nations but when you come to my office and I meet you after we talk about UN, we talk about Jesus. And then we pray. And I will impart more grace upon you. And you will return back, not as a religious fanatic, with a greater sense of intelligence. This is the vision, even behind the school of ministry. The school of ministry does not raise men of God alone. The school of ministry will raise men that will be used by God.
in every strata of human activities I made up my mind that as far as I'm concerned I will never raise a people by the grace of God who are only spiritually vibrant when you see in the midst of politicians know that it is ministry I'm doing there and I don't have to be mentioning Jesus I can help and we'll talk and say okay why don't we do this this way this way if I am confused I know what to do then the secret was revealed unto Daniel we have an advantage are we together if you have headache pray and fast if it remains go and look for a doctor doctor you are anointed don't die the death of a fool because of pride meet a doctor who will just give you a prescription when you are healthy you can now keep serving God while you are growing there are many people who are so fanatical about their positions a simple drug that would have solved their problem they would rather stay and say no I know I am this the word is working for me I'm not a fanatic listen listen let me tell you I believe in the power of God's word you know it with all my trips and schedules if I'm lying about this thing you will know believe me I say it without pride there are many people if you do one tenth of what I'm doing you collapse in one week I leave this place now maybe around 1 2 and by 5 30 I'm on my way to the airport preaching two sessions for Baba Wale okay I return back have a meeting and the next thing I'm in a vision preaching every day until Saturday and we're already preparing for all of this there are things you cannot fake if it's not at work in you it will show however however I am not stupid there are doctors here who have given me intelligent medical recommendations and I embraced it with wisdom are we together guide me on the kind of food to eat there are some of you by this service from here go to a chemist before you go home because you are not feeling fine don't die the death of a fool I'm sorry I'm talking this this is I, I hope I'm not forgive me eh? please There are some of you here, the only thing in your world is money. Repent. Come and meet us. Let us balance the other side because this your pursuing money is leading you to trouble. You need to come and even take a maybe a three weeks break. No talk of money so that you fan your flames again. That's why God kept us here. But there are some of you, God brought you to stay one month and be on fire and then go back and continue. But you have built a camp here. You are not Elisha. Go back. Are we together? Kingdom financiers, we will need you when all the projects begin. So while we pray for you, keep learning the wisdom of Egypt. And when God empowers you, don't use the gold in Egypt to build an idol in the wilderness keep it it is for the tabernacle not for the idol Joseph even though Pharaoh will promote you you will marry the daughter of per of Potiphar the priest of on they will change your name do not forget that even though you are carrying an Egyptian name you are a covenant child never forget Daniel you will sit in the midst of a parliament where almost nobody loves the Lord never forget that it was your prayer that preserved you so while you provide national solutions every time you stop and you're hooked somewhere look beyond the intellectual realm go back the secret is still being revealed the Holy Spirit is still alive hallelujah worship us please keep writing the songs because there are still Moabites who will try to walk against Judah and there are times our swords will not be able to fight make sure when we need to win by worship the songs should be ready are we together Joseph of Arimathea, keep doing your real estate. 
that grave you bought will preserve something one day the man who owns a donkey that you have not been told to ride don't feel bad it is Jesus who will ride on the donkey so take care of the donkey like Mary took care of Jesus go to the street that divides and you will see a colt that no man has ridden on lose it and if they ask you say the master has need of it there are people who will set up billion businesses and yet one naira from it will not be for them that is a cold that you yourself the owner is not allowed to enjoy because every time the master asks for it there is a crusade that needs 10 million instead of fasting and praying for money you fast and pray and say lord bring people because one kingdom financier says consider it done this talk of money that has mad the integrity of the church we have to kick that thing out there are intelligent people who are accessing the wisdom of the spirit plus the anointing that comes from the holy spirit through priesthood can have what it takes to command the wealth of nations believe me i it is an insult to redemption to call for a prayer and fasting for weeks and the only thing is oh god visit us we need financial resources there are better things when you fast and pray for a soul there are many things we are fasting and praying for that is unnecessary money can solve it you know I'm not lying oh God this rent and God says my dear daughter remember you rolled on the ground and told me I can use you there is a man of God somewhere who is about to lose the faith for the sake of the 1,000 people there Go and build him a house by the time you go there and say sir here is a key the key to this house the lord asked me to build it the question is among two of you who is a witness both of you if we say clap for who is walking most people will clap for the man of god and forget that the man of god would have plunged to depression and died and one thousand members would have gotten into I was going to travel to Kenya and my passport was in another embassy. I was almost going to miss that conference. Can you imagine? Hallelujah. And thank God for people here. One to one to contacting people at the highest level and they pulled out my passport and I was able to get there. That nation was blessed, not because a man was anointed alone, but somebody else was doing his job somewhere too. Are we together? I may be as anointed as you say and consider but I'm not the, the pilot who flies myself tomorrow by the grace of God people will be blessed and healed and delivered all through this week but how about the pilot who flies the plane how about the person who cooks to eat if you hear that I died for hunger is that is that a wise reason to die I wasn't my tired though just hunger are we together we are, we are about to pray what of the cloth I'm wearing as anointed as I am you bring me a needle and thread or you bring a what they call that thing the sewing machine I will stand and look at it like they, they looked at the writing on the wall now as I'm speaking to you right now there are professional kingdom minded tailors around this nation and around the world sewing my clothes so that I will look smart make no mistake to think they are not in ministry no. are we together as we are here right now there are security people everywhere making sure there is maximum security within this location all kinds of an intelligent you know sometimes when i see the security architecture that they design i'm very very humbled at the intelligence at the highest level the purpose of the training you are receiving here is because the gates of your assignment as far as its contribution to kingdom come is concerned is crying out for you for some of you you have remained in the temple for long the temple can become an idol more than the temple what you need is Jesus if your assignment is to go out there David 
if you are praying when Goliath is roaring Israel will die pray when you finish carry your weapons of war your destiny is to be a warrior that will later become a king Anna the prophetess if you leave the temple because you think you need money and you go and start being mentored by Joseph of Arimathea Jesus will not be able to come because the, your, the intercessory ministry will be corrupted by this teaching tonight I brought three things to you number one that there needs to be a rearrangement of our understanding as far as God's prophetic program and the revival coming is concerned that it is not only the spiritual aspect or the aspect of we men of God that is needed in this revival and that we men of God alongside the entire body must embrace the diversity of the operation of the spirit that will synergize itself together to capture the move of God we will need money we will need people of influence to defend our interest we will need military people to protect us while we take the risk with our lives we will need those who feed us those who dress us we will need those who protect the policies that keep the purposes of God then we will need those on fire who will walk in signs and wonders lifting people from wheelchairs and crutches we will need people who teach a mentor and guide people we will need evangelists who will preach like never before that holistic description is the army God is looking for please rise up on your feet God is raising mighty men in this place God is raising people of power in this place God is raising man of fire in this place and he won't stop he won't stop till his church looks like him he won't stop no he won't stop till my life looks like him God is raising man of power in this place God is raising man of influence in this place God is raising signs and wonders in this place he won't stop, he won't stop Till we look just like him He won't stop, no he won't stop Till we look just like him Two prayer points for this service and we're done Prayer point number one Father, show me from scripture An individual whose destiny represents where you are taking me to Go ahead and pray Go ahead and pray. Find yourself in the scripture. The Bible says he found where it was written concerning him. Please pray and obtain grace from God. Reveal to me by the power of your word where it has been written concerning me that lo, I come in the volume of the book. Elijah, find yourself in scripture. Sarah, find yourself in scripture. Joseph, find yourself in scripture. Paul, the writer of two-thirds of the New Testament, find yourself in scripture. Peter, the chiefest of the apostles, find yourself in scripture. Agabus, find yourself in scripture. Abraham, find yourself in scripture. There is nothing God wants you to become that you will not find a parallel of it in scripture. You will not go wrong when the word of God is guiding you please pray reveal the blueprint of my destiny by your word my contribution to this revival that Africa and even Nigeria is privileged to host in the name of Jesus final prayer point father grant me the grace to honor and to appreciate the diversities of assignments within the body of Christ go ahead and pray the grace man of God don't look down on business people business
business people don't look down on preachers entrepreneurs don't look down on leaders all together we represent parts and pieces of that glorious army wealthy people don't look down on intercessors and they who are pegged at the altar carrying the burden of nations and praying for them father grant me the grace to stay in my place of assignment but to have that understanding and that appreciation for the diverse provisions that are resident within the body in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus the time has come by the privilege of God's grace where an anointed man of God can stand here a businessman can stand here a politician kingdom-minded politician can stand here royalty like his majesty can stand here a justice head of a you know the judiciary can stand here and all of us together can hold hands and believe we are doing the same thing for as long as preachers keep being exalted more than other people the people will leave their assignments to be preachers so that they can get the clap too when you clap for joshua selman clap for the kingdom-minded justice clap for the businessman who in spite of the financial storm is still becoming a billionaire because the resources is what will keep joshua selman focused also clap for mama who is not educated but is raising five godly daughters are we together now oh yes don't clap for joshua selman and don't clap for mama those five daughters are the ones in the welfare department of his church and they are not stealing because mama trained them well the gentlemen who walk morning to night there was a father somewhere who did not pray in tongues but was sincere enough to raise them as responsible people threw away carelessness from their life now today they are the ones who are your heads of department and pastors don't clap and take glory for yourself let baba receive the share of his glory for disciplining and training those children can i tell you many people have taken away headache from us as men of god because they helped us now you don't have to suspect people and say you're a treasurer do you steal or you don't steal because somebody has trained them for you if you clap for joshua selman alone and demean and downplay other people simply because of the charismatism of ministry i'm not saying you not honor priesthood has its dimension of honor and i understand and whenever you do it and people do it across the globe i receive it with every sense of honor but i'm telling you this when i see people who have dimensions i do not have for instance when i meet with businessmen most times as they are greeting me ah my apostle i'm greeting them too god bless you sir and if i have the privilege of learning anything quickly i will not learn as apostle i will learn as a student by a king in an industry are we together when i have the opportunity to see an elderly person and i will greet her mama how are you oh man of god no mommy i'm a man of god but i'm your son too and she says really where i stop may you continue it's not a preacher that speaks that kind of blessing for you mm -mm. now you understand why we honor people in this house including our children you see those little children come and run we don't know you don't know how many trees can come out of a fruit you can guess how many fruits can come out from a tree these children you see as small as they are for some of them as soon as we share the grace that's when koinonia starts for them that jumping you see it is better for them to jump in the house of god some of you at their age you were still idol worshippers i'm not being sarcastic for these people to be praying in tongues while you are praying in tongues too 
what do you think they will become when they are your age the next time you see a little child or a little baby don't push them trying to see apostle we are both apostles it's only that one is manifesting earlier while the other is using my life to correct and work with greater accuracy are we together there are many people here who are younger ministers some of them come to me and you see me greet them and hug them some of them come and they want to lie down i said don't do that you can respect me but don't do that don't if there is anything we have is the privilege to have seen higher you may still be in your formative stage but we will pat you at the back when you make mistakes as much as god has shown us we will correct you but we will help you because the little boy you see in a manger is the one who will save the earth after 30 years is someone learning you need to go back after this service madam go and meet your husband and say thank you i thought you were a stupid man but now i know you're a man of god too forgive me for that ignorance there are some of you who will never cook a nice meal respectfully speaking for your husband but if you hear that i'm coming to your house you will even kill a cow for only me to eat it no it's not necessary it's not necessary that man god gave you is the one who gave the house that we can even come with honor parents don't look at this your children and while you are talking with joshua selman on phone and saying yes sir those little children they are the ones who will protect you in old age little children don't misbehave because you are learning nonsense from the internet are we together yes there are people at 11 they were already responsible on their own so please parents haven't encouraged you don't over pamper your children until they become a disaster to society if that stubborn child becomes a choir director he will do everything he did to his siblings in the choir you will add headache to the church politicians we love you we keep praying that you love this country above corruption and love this country above sentiment we will keep praying where god grants us the grace we will talk to you and to those of you who have brought yourselves under our leadership we will be will not be afraid to draw your ears in love and say do it this way but the body of christ in nigeria the body of christ in africa i have good news for you we will win it's been written forget what is happening in the church one problem here what forget it i am telling you it has been written this revival you see will not be aborted in the name of jesus we will not win because we are sufficient or we'll win because the captain has risen and has stood before us and as we follow him even as we blow the trumpet in zion and sound the alarm upon his holy mountain we will see the move of the spirit in africa like never before in the name of jesus father tonight we have heard your word you have charged our hearts and helped us to see the value of submitting ourselves to the word to growth to the house of god to methodical and structural mentorship lord i thank you for the blessings of these precious people you have given me in this place and global thank you for the gift of the body of christ thank you for all other men of god you have planted in this nation that continue to help us to see where we don't see clearly thank you for the diversities of the gifts thank you for the businessmen thank you for the politicians thank you for the judges thank you for the members of parliament thank you for the royalties thank you for the entrepreneurs thank you for the parents thank you for our force father we pray that you give us as a nation as regions as individuals a healthy orientation and an appreciation for the diversity of what you are doing in this body but lord we declare for revival we declare maranatha let it come for signs and wonders we declare let it come for breakthroughs and lifting we declare let it come for good and righteous governance we declare let it come for prosperity and increase we declare let it come 
for an end to terrorism occultism and oppression we declare maranatha and father we pray that when you are assessing africa and nigeria let it be by the privilege of god's grace that we did not miss out as we return oh god i pray that will return with stronger convictions making quality decisions that will help to reveal and glorify jesus for in the mighty and matchless name of jesus we pray give jesus a big hand clap god bless you hallelujah you want to make jesus lord of your life this moment haven't heard me speak you are saying apostle i know that i need jesus listen to me remember the one you bow to is the giver of the crown in the first place and if he does not empower you you cannot be able to live for him i told you there is one thing that is common between the businessman the man of god the captain of industry jesus for someone you came here to church and while i was speaking the Lord was speaking to you and telling you now let's minimize movement now is the time I want you to leave your seat right now as I count five I want you to come and stand before Jesus you are making a fresh decision you are rededicating your life come come there is a preacher in you you don't have to kneel please stand I have made a choice to listen for your voice wherever you may lead me I will go God bless you keep coming appreciate them as they come the shepherd of my soul I give you full control wherever you may lead I will go I have made a choice that I will listen for your voice wherever you may be. I will go. Come. If you're coming, please hurry up. I pledge allegiance to the land with all my heart, with all I am. To honor his command, I pledge allegiance to the man. Brothers and sisters, thank you for making this decision. And for those who are joining us by way of the internet, you're joining us by way of television or the rebroadcast. The Lord speaking to you. It is a new season and he's calling you to a life of total surrender he wants to make meaning out of your life to bring beauty and glory out of your life as i leave these precious ones to pray may i request that you also join in the prayer to the end that ye be saved please those of you who are in front and all the overflows may i request that you lift your right hand high above your head to heaven as a sign of surrender just your right hand is fine say this after me Lord Jesus tonight I have heard your word I believe in you that you are the son of God I believe that you died I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior as my lord and as my king i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight and forever i am a child of god washed by the blood of the lamb i go forward ever and backward never amen keep your hands lifted father thank you you have brought this once to yourself I declare that based on the integrity of your word their sins are forgiven and in the name of Jesus I call you the righteousness of God in Christ 
I declare that you are bona fide recipients of the life of God and that you obtain the grace to stay and to remain in the faith. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell and the grave is broken over your life and I commend you to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the Holy Spirit that you be grounded and established in righteousness. You go forward ever and backward never. In Jesus name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Congratulations for making this decision. May I please request that you move to my right. Be very careful with the crane. There are counselors waving the placard. Let's celebrate them as they go. Thank you. Thank you. It's a new beginning for you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, just, just to add one or two announcements. Thank you for your patience. We're announcing that the public relations department, the public relations department, they are responsible for correspondences, um, is open here in Abuja now. It's opened for new members all those who desire to be part of our pr department all interested persons can send their applications by email to pr koinonia pr koinonia as one word at gmail.com to indicate your interest address the letter to the head of department public relations the closing date i have here is sunday the 10th of september sunday the 10th is it saturday or so but the 10th of september that should be a saturday so please you are interested you can find out more information at the pr desk immediately after the grace hallelujah one more time we honor and appreciate his majesty the olu of worry and her majesty thank you so much sir we truly honor you and we appreciate you and for everyone who has come our international guests we bless and we love you and we honor you one day we'll have the time to ask all our international guests to come here and we'll pray for them probably by the next miracle service hallelujah rise up on your feet thank you so very very much may the lord bless you in the name of jesus this week beginning let it be a week of blessings for you you go from glory to glory in the name of jesus the lines have fallen for you in pleasant places and I declare that you have a goodly heritage. The hand of the Lord is strong upon you. You are effective in the area of your kingdom service. And the contribution that your life should make as far as this global missions and revival is concerned, you will make effectively. May the Lord bless you. Every point of need, whatever it is that is an issue of need in your life, I declare in Jesus' name that you receive it as an answer right now. The Lord bless you. In Jesus' name I pray. Let's share the grace together in fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercies follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.